Please join me in welcoming director Tony Goldwyn to the stage. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. We really appreciate it. Thanks, you're an amazing audience. <laughs> that, that meant yes. a lot to us. I'm going to ask a few questions, and we're going to hopefully have a little bit of time to open up some questions to the audience. I'm going to start with the first question. Uh, the film is a family drama, a portrait of a stand-up comedian, and a bit of a road movie. What inspired you to tell this very original story? How did the script and all of this come about? Well, as I briefly mentioned in my introduction, um, our, uh, my dearest friend and our extraordinary writer and producer, Tony Spiridakis, who's here somewhere with his family. Um, <laughs> so, Tony, um, uh, if I may, Tony, I wish you could be up here with me, but um, that can't happen right now because he's in solidarity with his guild. Um, but um, uh, Tony's... Uh, here, here. Um, Tony uh, has a, an extraordinary son uh, named Dimitri who um, is autistic, and they went through quite an experience uh, when, when Dimitri was about uh, Ezra's age and many of the struggles that Max is having uh, were very deeply personal to Tony and you know, mirrored uh, what, what Tony was experiencing and, and um, he really wanted to write a movie about it. And uh, this was around 12 years ago. And uh, over the years, you know, he wrote many, many drafts and um, uh, all were wonderful but had sort of different tones and and I read all of them just as a friend and um, a couple of years ago uh, it had been a few years since I'd heard about the script and um, of course I you know as I mentioned before watched the his family grow up um, and he said uh, I, I've rewritten um, the, the, the screenplay and I wondered if you'd read it I'd love your thoughts about it I think I've really gotten somewhere with it and I read it and I said tone I, I want to direct this. I think this really, you cracked it. You, this works now. Let's, let's do this together. What an amazing thing to do. So that was about two years ago, and then we worked on the script together for about a year, and um, really got into shape, and then did what we do with independent movies. You know, we started to put together the cast, and, um, you know, we, uh, Bobby was the perfect <laughs> Max, and... Um, <laughs> Yeah, and, we, and we'd wanted to work together, and, and so, you know, called him up, and he loved the script, and, and it terrified him <laughs> uh, to, to play a stand-up comic, which is a, a real, like, maybe one of the most daunting things for an actor to, to take on, but he was game, and, um, of course, our first choice for Stan was Robert De Niro, and um, <laughs> through uh, a miracle, <laughs> you know, Bob said yes. And uh, Bobby, you know, Rose was the perfect Jenna, um, and Bobby and Rose happened to be married and live together, so that was convenient. And we just started to attract this extraordinary cast, and everybody, you know, uh, w was really in love with the script. And then, as I mentioned, um, I, you know, I realized, oh my God, this is this is happening. We can't do this by ourselves. And um, uh, w you know, with the the help of kind of my team um, at CA and uh, my uh, one of my managers, Laura Rister, who's one of the big reasons why this movie came to light too. Laura, you know, helped hook me up with uh, with Bill and John, our producers. And I had known Tony, and I had known Bill, you know, over 30 years ago, and had worked with him, and and we'd known John for a really long time, and it just was the right synergy. And they really, with you know, in a matter of months, whipped this thing, you know, with us, we all whipped this thing into into reality, um, which always feels like a miracle. Oh, and I should say, William Arthur Fitzgerald, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, William, you want to stand up? There's William.
So, you know, we knew that we did not have a movie if we did not have Ezra. No matter how many wonderful actors we had, this movie just wouldn't work if you didn't have the right kid. And so, um, you know, our great casting directors, Carrie Barden and Paul Sinead, took up the challenge. And uh, we knew we must have an actor, uh, uh, an autistic actor, to play Ezra. And um, so they started a search across the country, and we saw, I think, 100 uh, extraordinary young people. And um, we couldn't find them. And uh, this may be one of your questions. I don't know, but I'm just You, anyway. you just read my mind. <laughs> okay, because so, I was going to say it was so perfectly cast. And so please continue. Thank you, thank you. So, so, uh, so we were about, gosh, I think less than a month away from shooting. And we still hadn't found uh, our Ezra. And we'd flown kids in to, to screen test with Bobby and to do chemistry reads. And they were these amazing young men, and, but they weren't the person. And uh, we all looked at each other and said, we haven't gotten there yet. And we're, you know, we start shooting in a few weeks. And Carrie or, and Paul called me on the weekend. He said, you know, this, this tape came in just yesterday. Uh, and, and, and the kid's kind of really interesting. He wanted to maybe take a look at this. And he lives in Montclair, New Jersey, which is, we were shooting the movie in Jersey. And um, so uh, I watched William's tape. And I, my jaw was on the floor. <laughs> And um, I said, can he come in to read with Bobby like tomorrow? Or maybe it was Saturday, so on Monday. And William came in with Laura and Dave, his parents who are here today, who are just the most extraordinary people. And his sister Eleanor is here. <laughs> truly, a truly remarkable family. And a family that is so deeply uh, exudes love of each other, and, and, and Laura and Dave were an invaluable force uh, on our set, I have to say. You guys were just, uh, you know, again, we wouldn't have, you were just our partner the whole way through. Um, as, as you may know, when you're dealing with young actors, the parents often are, are everything, and, and um, you two are extraordinary. Uh, so, so they came in, and I, I went outside into the waiting room to, to meet William Fitzgerald, and I, my breath when I took my breath away because he was Dimitri Spiridakis at 12 years old. I was like, oh, nice to meet you. And I ran into the casting room. I said, Tony, I just met Dimitri, which is Tony's son, right? And he said, really? And William came in and, and just um, is just one of these uh, natural actors. He improvised a lot of what you saw, a lot of the lines, hilarious lines in there. I would say, are not all Tony Spiridakis's. Many of them are William Fitzgerald's. And, um, and we kept them, pretty much all of them in, William. Um, and, uh, you know, he had, um, we had some heavy stuff to do in this, telling this story, and, and, and William threw down. He uh, is the real deal. So, yeah, that's the story of yes. Ezra. <laughs> I just want to ask, from your perspective, uh, the family relationships are so beautifully drawn. Um, but at the end of the film for you, what is it in Max, uh, Bobby's character, that is driving him to sort of blow things up? And what is it about fighting for his son that allows him to make peace with himself? And that's what I took away at the end of the film. <laughs> Well, I think um, what Max learns is that he's okay, that it's okay. You know, as, as uh, Vera, as, uh, as Grace says to him, you know, not everyone is trying to bite you, Max. Uh, and Max is, uh, feels this tremendous need to intervene, to fix, and to... To, to, to save Ezra and to make him, you know, to, to make it okay and to, to protect him and, and, that, and feels that the system is trying to destroy them. And, and Ezra's, Ezra's pretty cool. <laughs> like, we all have our struggles, right? So Ezra's got his struggles. He has his sensitivities. But as does Max, as does Stan. And I think Max realizes when he's on his ass and Ezra says, give me the ball, you know, they're all fine. And w w we, um, and, and here's the other thing. Max had it right all along. 
as Bob said, you know, as, as Stan says to him, you know, you're fighting for something that means something. And you may get arrested, and we, we do screw up, and, you know, uh, and we do lots of wrong things, or as, as Tony likes to say, you know, you gotta do, sometimes you've got to do the wrong thing so the right thing happens. Um, that's, uh, Max comes to a sort of a sense of acceptance of the chaos that is Max, and it's okay. And Ezra's going to struggle, and he's going to, some things will work and won't, but that's, that's what families are, and uh, he hasn't lost his family. It's still right there at the end. It's just a little, wasn't quite the shape that he thought he was supposed to have. It's wonderful. I think we have room just to take one question oh, <laughs> from the that. audience, but I think you really just uh, spoke so beautifully. So I'm going to say, where do I take that one question? Okay, this gentleman has his hand right up, so I'm going to take his question. You touch it a little bit. There were a lot of funny lines in the movie. It's just kind of comedy lines, and the dialogue was it something that was scripted already, or you had improvised? Uh, the question is that there were a lot of funny lines in the movie and w w both between just the dialogue and the, um, the uh, stand-up comedy routines, were they all scripted? Um, I would say most, most of it was definitely, you know, scripted by Tony's hand. Um, uh, you know, he, we thought about bringing in a comedian and, and Bobby actually worked very intensively with Bill Burr and some other, you know, comedians who really helped him and, and, uh, but, you know, we thought, oh, we might need a comedian to come in, but Tony was telling stories, and, and, and the stories were funny. And, we, you know, and Bill was saying to, to Bobby, you know, not everything a comic has comes out of their mouth has to be, you know, knocked down hilarious. Max is a storyteller, so really that was all Tony. There were, there were some improvised lines. As I said, William came up with some brilliant uh, ad-libs that we kept in, and I'm sure there were a number, you know, the Bobby threw in stuff, and Rain Wilson certainly who's so great, you know, Rain came up with some really hilarious stuff, like the Arsenio Hall, I think was, I think that was Rain's line. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so we had some wonderful talent and they, people were allowed to, to throw down if they wanted to, but um, it, was, it was mostly Tony's script, yeah. Well, thank you so much. Thank you, Tony, for premiering the film here with Tiff. Thank we you feel so much. absolutely privileged. It was thank my you. privilege. Thank you all, I really appreciate you. Fantastic. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you all. Good night.